Hi, it's uh, Friday, June 8th, kind of different. Uh, today I'm in my car. Uh, you can kind of see a little bit of my steering wheel here, but John 17, uh, means you'd have a service today, but I just want to give this to you. John 17 is the true Lord's Prayer. We're going to talk about it a little bit. Get your Bibles if you have it. Um, John 17, you know, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. That's the model prayer. Jesus told uh, his disciples how to pray. Uh, true prayer, our Father. We pray to the Father through the Son. Many people make a mistake. They pray to Jesus. And uh, we're supposed to pray through the Son to the Father. But John 17 is the reading for today, the true Lord's Prayer. Uh, these words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come, glorify thy Son, that thy Son also may glorify thee. Uh, coming back into the, uh, uh, Jesus going back into heaven. And so here in John 17, uh, this is his prayer to the heavenly Father. He always did what honored the Father. He always pleased the Father. Uh, verse 2, it says, As thou hast given him power over all flesh, Jesus had the power given by the Father, uh, over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. And how many has uh, how many has the Father given to the Son to be saved? As many as call upon him. The Bible says in, in uh John 10, 13, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Anybody calls with a repentant heart, you hear a little noise, that's rain. It's raining right now. You probably got your window and see that too if you're watching me live, if you're not watching me later. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. So, uh, the Heavenly Father, God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him uh, should not perish, but have uh, everlasting life. And uh, that's a wonderful thing, that we can have eternal life. The Heavenly Father has given that life to us through believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse uh, 4, I have glorified thee on the earth. See, uh, it says no one had seen God, no one had seen the Father. But when you see the Son, you see the Father. Isn't that wonderful? Uh, I have glorified thee on the earth, which Jesus did. Uh, I have finished the work which thou givest me to do. Now, what was the work that Jesus came down to this earth to do? He came down to save Christ. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners like you and I. So uh, that's it. Uh, he finished his work, so he was going back to heaven. And now, O Father, glorify uh, thou me with thine own self, with the glory that I had with thee before the world was. You see, when Jesus came down to this earth, he had to lay aside some of his garments of deity, uh, some of his godliness he put aside when he took the form of a man and he didn't have all the power and everything. He set that aside for 33 years. Uh, verse six, I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me. Of course, he's, that's the saved ones. Uh, uh, out of the world, uh, thine they were, and thou givest them to me, and they have kept thy word. So, sir, see, saved people live different. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Uh, uh, so this is a wonderful thing that uh, we can be saved and be a new creature. Verse 7, now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. Verse 8, John 17. For I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me, the very word of God. I was, I was uh, studying the Bible uh, with Samuel this morning, uh, a helper, and uh, they, uh, that little word a uh, means so much. You know, the Jehovah Witnesses, the Jehovah False Witnesses, they have what they call the New World Translation. And in John, I was, I was talking with Samuel and telling him about how uh, Jesus was a great creator. Uh, which he was, and, and we went back to John uh, chapter 1, and it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. That's what the Bible says, authorized version. The, 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 the New World Translation says, was a God. 
a God. Just a little word a changes the whole meaning, means that he was a subservient God, and he was a little God, and he wasn't the very God. Jesus Christ is the very God, triune God. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. Uh, so I've given them the words which thou hast given me. I believe for word for word, I believe in word for word uh, inspiration. I believe every word of God. I don't even believe the words are, just the words are true, but the jot and tittles, the, uh, the, uh, the punctuation marks are settled in heaven forever. So that's why we have the authorized version, uh, which is in these days called the King James Bible. And they have received them and have known surely that I came out from thee, and they have believed that thou didst send me. So the Heavenly Father sent the Son uh, to be the Savior of the world. I pray for them. I pray not for the world. Well, that's interesting. I pray for them, the saved ones, not for the world, uh, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. So Jesus is praying uh, for the saved one, we that are born again Christians. And all mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in thee. Verse 11. And now I am no more in the world. So he's going back to heaven. I am no more in the world. But these are in the world. And I came to thee, Holy Father, keep uh, uh, keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me. We saved ones, again, praying for us, that uh, they may be one as we are one. God wants unity in the church. We have so much division and strife in the church. How sad that is. And God says, as the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost are one and always in perfect harmony and unity, doing everything together, you and I as church members ought to be too. Uh, while I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou givest me I have kept, and none of them is lost but the son of perdition. He was talking about these original uh, disciples and uh, how important that was that it had the twelve, but one was the devil. Of course, that was uh, Judas Iscariot, the devil. Verse 13, And now uh, come I to thee, and these things I speak in the world, that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. See, God wants us to have joy. He tells about it often. Uh, we were in John 15. Uh, he wanted us to have full joy uh, as a child of God, and and He wants us to have joy, uh, not happiness. Happiness depends upon what happens. Joy comes from the Lord, which is wonderful, and He wants us to have um, that full joy. All right. And it says, and that my joy might be filled in themselves. Verse 14, I have given them thy word, and, and the world hath hated them. You see, I'm hated by worldly people. I've talked about and lied about, and, and that's part of the territory. If you're a Christian, they persecuted Christ, they're going to persecute you. So you're going to be hated. Just mark it down. I like to be loved by everybody and be a big popular thing, but Christians aren't popular. Verse 15, John 17, I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. You see, Jesus prays for us, and I pray to be kept from this evil world, this wicked world, and God has a controlling power. You know, nothing happens to you and I unless God allows it. That's the exact truth. Nothing happens to you and I unless God allows it. Verse 16, they are not of the world. See, I'm, I'm not of the world. This world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Verse 17, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is true. So we're supposed to be set apart or sanctified through the blessed uh, word of God, the truth of the word. 18, as thou hast sent me into the world, even so I have sent them into the world. So we've been sent into the world by the heavenly Father, uh, uh, to do the work of Christ and this is a wonderful thing that we can do it. Verse 19 and for their sakes I sanctify myself, Jesus Christ sanctify means set apart myself that also I might be sanctified through the truth of course the Bible is the truth and it sets us apart it sanctifies us. Verse 20 it says pray thee uh, neither pray I for these alone but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. See, that's us way down through the ages. He wasn't just talking to the 12 uh, disciples. He was talking to us too uh, that would believe uh, through their word, the Bible that was written by them down through the ages. Verse 21, 
that they all may be one. Ah, oh, the unity of the church. Remember the 120 on the day of Pentecost? They prayed and fasted, and the Holy Ghost came down in fullness on the day of Pentecost, and 3,000 were saved and baptized and added to the church that day, and then and then day by day it says, and, and they were uh, each day there was daily people getting saved and baptized and added to the church. How wonderful uh, that was. Verse 22, And the glory which thou givest me I have given them, that they may be one, even as we are one. We need to be unified as a church. The devil brings in church splits and brings people fuss. I just call a blessed church member that has a little odd against me because something I preach and I call, I need to get things straightened out. I don't like people having a lot about me, especially because what I preach. And we want to be one. We want to be together, and that's important. Made perfect. I'm thee and thou and me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the, that the world uh, may know that thou hast sent me, and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. Father, I will that ye also, whom thou hast given me, be with me, for I am that your phone ring. I didn't, didn't, didn't turn it off. It's off now. I need to shut this thing so it don't ring again. Let me push a button or something. I think I'm going to do this. This might shut it off. I'm going to try to shut it off. That shut it off. Okay. Hope I can finish. Sorry for the interruption. This is not a professional uh, studio, that's for sure. Oh, my phone got, Bobby got away from me. All right, let's go on. I finished saying up 25. O righteous Father, the world hath not known thee, but I have known thee, and these have known that thou hast sent me. I know the Heavenly Father sent Jesus to save me. God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son. I have declared unto them thy name, and I will declare it, that, that the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them, and I in them. Well, that's that wonderful 26 uh, verses of John 17. It's the true Lord's Prayer. Read it over and over and, and think upon it. And God bless you. It's been good talking with you today. You have a blessed evening. Now, if anybody's not saved, why don't you just get saved right now? You didn't understand what I was talking about, but you want to be saved, and God wants you to. So let's pray the sinner's prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for sending Jesus to die and shed his blood for our sins and raise from the grave. I'm so glad I'm saved, April 4th, 1969. I'm so glad others that are watching are saved. And I saved that sinner nearest hell. Pray this prayer with me, you that need to be saved. Dear Lord Jesus, I repent of my sins. I turn from them. I take you to be my Savior and all the hope of heaven. Please, dear Lord, forgive my sins. I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm so glad we had this time together. God bless you. See you soon.